Okay, so we're going to take a look at how to get integration done by crunching the numbers on your own by hand. Um, for this to make sense, it's probably better that you've already learned about or watched the video on integration properties and integration with geometry, because I'm going to assume that you have a, a background information on integration. So in this very first problem, it's pretty straightforward in the fact that you could probably graph 2x minus 6 and calculate trapped area via geometry. But what's going to happen is eventually these this integrand is going to get more and more complicated where that's not going to be an option for you. So I'm going to go through the steps of integration by hand and just so you understand the importance of this, this is called the fundamental theorem of calculus. Wow, that sounds weighty, so this must be a big deal. All right, so the steps that you do when you get a problem like this, your very first step is find the antiderivative. This is why we practiced taking antiderivatives earlier, by the way. So you find the antiderivative of 2x minus 6. It's x squared minus 6x. All right, so the other thing that you have to do, this is very important, the symbol changes. This symbol changes to this symbol, and that tells the reader of your math work that you've already taken the antiderivative. So your limits of integration change from the integral sign to this bar sign on the opposite side. The people who mistakenly rewrite it like this They've done the antiderivative, but they keep the integral sign. That is absolutely positively wrong. Even if in your brain you understand what you're doing, on paper, that's not going to fly. All right, you do the antiderivative, and now you simply plug in your limits of integration. So what I mean by that is, you see that 3. That 3 gets plugged into the x squared and the x. So that's 3 squared minus 6 times 3. Then you plug in the lower limit of integration. 0 into there and 0 into there. So I basically recopied this with the 3 in there, subtract this with the 0 in there. It's always plug in the upper limit, subtract, plug in the lower limit. From there it's just arithmetic, so don't screw that up. I crunch the numbers, and I end up with a final answer of minus 9. Okay, so that tells you the answer to that integral. Now, if it's an easy enough integrand and you have time, you can check yourself. So I'm going to show you here. I've made a graph of 2x minus 6. And in this case, our integral went from 0 to 3. So it was all of this area under here, which because of my prowess in geometry, I can say, hey, that's a triangle that's 3 by 6, which tells me the area is 9. My answer was negative 9, though, remember. So why is that? It's because of your geometry, your uh, integration properties, we were traveling in a positive direction from 0 to 3, but all the area was underneath the axis, so it was like a positive times a negative. And that's why we get negative 9. This is a good visual check of that. All right, let's take a look at a second problem. Very similar to the first, but now I've changed the limits of integration. Okay, so we have the same integrand, new limits of integration, and the procedure is the same. Antiderivative, the symbolism has changed. Plug in the 4, plug in the 2. Make sure you're subtracting those. Remember, subtraction is your enemy as a math student. So our negative, so you're going to end up with some tedious stuff here. Now, let's see. 
So taking more steps than you think is necessary is probably a good idea because imagine with all these negatives and subtraction floating around, imagine the silly mistakes waiting to happen. So we got an answer of zero. Is there any way to verify if that's a reasonable answer? I say yes. Check this out. We did the integral in that last problem from 2 to 4. Let me put it right up here. So if we did the integral from 2 to 4, of 2x minus 6, 2 is here, 4 is here. What I'm doing is I'm traveling from 2 to 4. I've got basically a negative region and a positive region. And because of the symmetry of this function, this amount of area and this amount of area are equal to each other. So I have a negative blah, 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 and a positive blah, blah, blah which ends up working out to be a zero. Um, incidentally, if you feel like doing this, it's not a bad idea. In this very first problem where we got a negative nine, if you redo that problem and you go from three to zero of two x minus six, now you're traveling in the negative direction or the opposite direction that you were traveling here. If you work out the math, you crunch those numbers, you'll end up with a positive 9, just like you would have reasoned out, this drawing is getting overused now, but just like you would have reasoned out if you were traveling to the left and the area was below the axis. It would have been a negative times a negative to give you a positive 9. If you take the time to crunch those numbers, you'll also get a positive 9. Okay, we'll just run through a few more problems, but the procedure is not any different now. I have a trig function, trig style limits of integration. I simply go antiderivative. Be careful here because it's easy to just say cosine of x, but because of the pesky negative sign that people will miss, people might screw it up. Plug in the limits of integration, upper limit, then lower limit. And we end up with a 1. And if I were to relate that to a, uh, a graph, and get this prepared for you. You could graph the sine function and look from 0 to pi over 2, which is what I did here. If I go from 0 to pi over 2, and I'm going in the positive direction, that answer is 1. So it's kind of weird that that region ends up to have an area of exactly 1. So I'm a bit freaky. Don't worry. All right, I think two more. I'm going to go quicker, though, so you should definitely pause the video and try these out on your own. Uh, remember, it's easy to agree with someone else who moved the pen or the pencil, but when you have to move the pen or the pencil yourself, it's a different story. This one is uh, an example of how it can get a little messy. I have my antiderivative, new limits of integration symbolism, and it might seem like, well, I can't do this because these functions are too messy. Take more steps than you think. I plug in the 1, subtract, I plug in the 0. Now that looks like it can't be simplified, but it really can. e to the 1 is just e. Nothing you can do. e to the 0 is a 1. And did you know the natural log of 1 is 0? Of course you did, because you took pre-calculus. Here's a graph of the natural log. And at 1, the value of natural log is 0. That whole mess could be written like that. And a good AP test writer would like to give you one or two questions during the test where you have to write down an answer that freaks you out. And this very last problem is to show you a simple problem 
but it's meant to intimidate you because it uses letters. Letters that are unfamiliar to you in most math problems because you'd rather there was a number there. My limits of integration are a and b instead of something like 4 and 12. That's all right. And by the way, I used a w for a variable, which means my symbolism here is dw. Normally, you're used to saying 6x dx, but it could say 6 pop-tart d pop-tart. This is telling you what variable is in play. Even though it's a little bit awkward, you simply do the antiderivative and you ask yourself, does this thing have a derivative that brings me back up there? It sure does. Plug in your limits of integration. Boom. Boom. And you're done because that thing can't really be simplified. Um, there's a chance some people would do this, factor out a 3, and then even go one step further. I wouldn't worry about that unless you had to match a multiple choice question, which is a possibility. Um, that's integration by hand. It's a simple procedure, but it takes practice. It takes a decent chunk of practice. Most students overestimate their ability to do this correctly.